the thing about Don Alfonso too is, is that he spends most of his time just looking. Yes. Well, listening as well. Yes, is that fun? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah, because you don't have to work then. It's just intelligent watching, you know. <laughs> it's a bit like The Office. It's, it's just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> things going on, and you think, you know, and I'm not sure what that is. Yes, oh, right, okay. And, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's sort of acting listening, but you try to listen intelligently and observe and all the time feeling as though, well, th that's happening because I put that in operation uh, two arias ago, or that's going to happen because I'm, I've set that one up nicely and I'm just, just tugging the strings ever so slightly uh, in order that it happens. And in shortly, in another couple of arias, there's going to be a big clash, and I've done that. So you'd sit back and observe it. <laughs> it's wonderful. It, you don't get an aria. That doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, gr it's great fun. It's much nicer than singing Guglielmo, I have to tell you. All baritones hate singing Guglielmo. It's a kind of apprenticeship towards Giovanni or something else. I, is it because there isn't much you can do in terms of characterization with Guglielmo? It's you, it, this, this character there, there's not really any kind of emotional impact. Mm. You know, Ferrando and mm. uh, Fiordligi have that mm. amazing mm. contact. Uh, and even Dora Bella, Dizzy Dora Bella, has uh, a mad aria, and she can do something and, w you know, spin herself into oblivion if she wants to at the end of it. But Guglielmo somehow rails against uh, women, um, finally, in the way that Figaro does at the end of the act, uh, at the end of his opera. Uh, but I don't know, it's it's just not satisfying in the same way as some of the others, and I'm not the only one to think that. Mm. Do you just, uh, I mean, given that you like to, to tell stories about these characters, uh, do you think Guglielmo and Alfonso eventually manage some kind of... Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Maybe that's why Guglielmo is so dull. They've got a loft in Soho. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were growing up in the Northeast, did you hear uh, oratories? Were you part of that kind of great tradition? Yes. Um, yeah, and there was no opera. Uh, I didn't know what opera was. But I, I at three-year-old, I was already saying to my Uncle Jim, sing comfort ye, Uncle Jim. <laughs> so, I, so I'd get comfort ye on a regular basis at home. Uh, so I knew Messiah very well, and there were performances of mostly of Olivet de Calvary or the Crucifixion. Olivet de Calvary mostly, mm. Maunder. Mm. Um, and Creation. Mm and sometimes Elijah. But, you know, those were the days when Robert Easton and Isabel Bailey and Kathleen Ferrier and everybody were doing the tours. And, um, and so there was, a, there, was a, there was a lot of oratorio around in the small chapels. I mean, I remember hearing a fantastic performance, it seemed at the time, a fantastic performance of creation in a chapel in Church Street in Seam, um, the Wesleyan Chapel, I think it was, uh, that's no longer there. Um, but it was wonderful. And you think of, you know, those traditions and what used to be. Mm. So I did hear a lot, mm. and um, yeah, it, 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 it's in your blood. <laughs> you were going to be a doctor. What happened? Well, no, I wasn't really. It, it's, it, it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did want to be, it's true. Um, but if, if I was 13 again, we, we had to make a decision um, at school. Um, and I was consider considered, along with others, uh, to be reasonably bright. So we would do O-levels a year early. And uh, it meant choosing O-levels just that little bit earlier than one might have wanted to. And so I chose, it said science down there, and I went down that science thing there, which was a dark ending. And uh, when I really should have been going towards art, French, um, and something along that line, and I didn't. And I, it, that's one of the big regrets. So I struggled really along there with physics and chemistry and biology, fine, and um, got, got myself a, a provisional place at St. Andrews for medicine. And then, um, but music had, had started to sully my life by then. <laughs> and um, and th it started to take over. I was already singing big concerts for the Women's Institute in Sunderland <laughs> and uh, Towns Women's Guild in Houghtonley Spring and things like that. So I, I, it was time to move and change. There's one thing I've always wanted to ask. You have this wonderful biblical middle name, Boaz, yes, that, yes. That, that should really signal you as a great oratorio <laughs> singer. <laughs> it, 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 is this a family name? Yes. 
Peter Pierce, all, I got to know Peter in about 1965, and he saw my middle name, and he said, uh, uh, no, he didn't say that. <laughs> uh, he said, I, I think you should, you, know, you should use your full name, Thomas Boaz Allen. It's very good, very good. I said, I, I can't go around using a Z, uh, so I didn't. Uh, but my father was Thomas Boaz. My son is Stephen Boaz. Um, my grandfather was Thomas Boaz. And before that, in the cemetery at Seam, if you look around, you'll find Boaz Gotts. And that was my lineage <laughs> back there. But they were, um, you know, he's the great man from the Book of Ruth. Mm. And um, my, uh, we're not a Jewish family, we're a Methodist family. Um, and my grandparents were, were strong, strict Methodists, and uh, this Boaz was in the family, and that mm. was it. Mm. It was to do with, um, with family, I think, really. H I think had there know. originally been a Boaz got, and then another name got added? I mean, was it a kind of traditional first name? I think it had been, yes, but I don't know the, 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 the full lineage of it. My, my mm. great-grandfather was James, but I don't think Boaz was in his name. I don't think it was, but, you know, with computers these days, I might well start investigating that one. But I like, ha I, I, I like having it, I must say. When you went through Royal College, um, you specialised, I think, in oratorio and leader. Yes. W was that your choice, or was that a choice that the college made on your behalf? I, initially, on my behalf, I mean, I went there as a 19-year-old or whatever, and certainly wasn't ready to... My voice wasn't ready for anything, frankly, but um, it, it was good. The, you know, the, the, the rough diamond was, was there, <coughs> but certainly not ready for um, the rigors of, a, of an operatic life. Um, so I, and my passion was songs. I mean, I, you know, you don't start off generally singing operatic arias. You start by singing Lyndon Lee and uh, Sea Fever and, and such like, and Simon the Cellarer, which I did, uh, and then eventually, with through the training, um, it, you strengthen, you mature, um, build up the um, reserves, and uh, and then eventually uh, got involved in some opera. But I, I didn't really want to get into the opera school or get into opera at all until somewhere much further down the line. I thought it was an impure sort of form, and I think that came from what was going on in the opera school at the college in those days. It wasn't wonderful. Mm. Uh, the, the standards weren't particularly high, frankly. And uh, I just felt uh, it was m I was more in my proper world upstairs, mm. as opposed to down in the theater, um, singing Bach and um, Mozart and Mahler and mm. Schumann and Schubert. But you must have sensed you had an extraordinary dramatic talent as well as a, a vocal talent. I didn't, no, no, I didn't. Um, I mean, I enjoyed singing the songs, and of course, singing in singing songs and arias, you 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 are um, uh, being dramatic in, in in you know up to a point um, in in uh, performing them and, and, and demonstrating the text. But I didn't know whether I had any skill for putting on costume and makeup and then strutting around a stage. I ne I'd never done that, um, and I didn't think it was for me really. Uh, but there was an emergency on one occasion at the college. They had no, well, I say an emergency, you know, it wasn't life and death, as we say. But it was, uh, there was a, a, a shortage of one baritone for a, for a production of Benj uh, Arthur Benjamin's Prima Donna. Mm. And I, I took the lift downstairs and, uh, and tried it out. And that was, that was my blooding, as it were. And, um, and then I auditioned for Welsh National, and w it went on from there. But I I'd had no training um, you know, as, as one does about putting one foot in front of the other and learning stage technique and what have you. I picked that.